Hello and welcome to this comprehensive guide on using Bitbucket and Gitkraken. In terms of what we'll cover today, it's mostly a series of examples that should show you how you can connect the Bitbucket integration, regardless of whether you're using bitbucket.org or Bitbucket server. And through those examples, we'll be showing you not only how to authenticate with your repos, either over HTTPS or specifically SSH, but also how you interact with your remotes. So what's the relationship between your local repositories on your machines and the remotes as they exist on Bitbucket? And finally, we'll conclude with an example of how to create a pull request using Gitkraken so that it appears on Bitbucket for others to interact and collaborate with you. Throughout this video, I will also be going into some quick reviews, refreshers on certain concepts. So whether you're new or more seasoned, Hopefully that information will help supplement what we learned today and provide some more insight on some of the benefits of using Gitkraken. So let's get started. One of the most important steps to using Bitbucket and Gitkraken is using the integration. And so the integration is what allows us to more conveniently access our list of remotes, more easily create pull requests, and a few other convenient features which I'll be showing you throughout this video. But let's focus on the authentication piece. So when you download Gitkraken and open it for the first time, maybe you're already a user or maybe you're a brand new user. Either way, you will be familiar, you will become familiar with the new tab view. And this gives you the ability to open, clone, or start a local repository. You also have the ability to initialize a repository on, on any of these services. The one I'll highlight here is Bitbucket. So because this is the first time I will be setting up Bitbucket, I'm actually going to go to Preferences. So th if this is you, make sure you go to Preferences. And we're going to click on the Authentication tab here on the left. Once you click on it, you will see the myriad of services that we support. And the two integrations that we'll be focusing on today will be Bitbucket.org and Bitbucket Server. So the integrations for both of these are different in terms of the setup but you'll find that the features and benefits that you receive will be identical. Bitbucket.org integration is available with any paid license. And if you are, if you are on Gitkraken Pro or any of the Gitkraken Enterprise options, then you will also have the option for Bitbucket Server. The integration itself is pretty straightforward. So first, let's walk through Bitbucket.org. So you'll have an option to connect to Bitbucket and you click the button, and it's pretty simple. You, do you want to continue the authorization? I'm going to say yes. We make a handshake, and once that's complete, you will get a success page. Then when you return to Gitkraken, you will see that the connection has been successful via this success toast message, and you'll have an additional option. You'll have the ability to generate an SSH key and then copy it to your clipboard. Now before I do that, I am going to take a quick detour here and I want to talk about SSH. SSH is a network protocol that allows one computer to securely connect to another computer over an unsecured network like the internet. As you may know, without encryption, data travels over the web in plain text, which makes it easy for someone to intercept username or password data and then use it. However, SSH encrypts your data through a tunnel, so you can securely log into a remote machine. You can securely transmit files or safely issue remote commands and more. SSH is commonly implemented using the client-server model. One computer is the SSH client, and another machine acts as the SSH server. And so in our case, the SSH server will be Bitbucket. SSH can then be set up using a pair of keys, a public key that is stored on the SSH server, so in this case Bitbucket, and a private key that is locally stored on the SSH client, which is your machine. The SSH client will then make contact with the SSH server up on Bitbucket and provide the ID of the key pair it wants to use to prove its identity. The SSH server then creates a challenge which is then encrypted by the public key and sent back to the client. You as the client then take the challenge, decrypt it with your private key, and then send the original challenge back to the SSH server. 
Once the negotiation is complete, the connection is established and you can get to work. So all of that is happening when you set up SSH with Gitkraken. And what would normally be a series of steps to create your own SSH keys is now just a click of a button here in Gitkraken. And so I'm going to actually use Gitkraken's option to generate an SSH key. It will be copied to my clipboard once I do that. And I will then click on the option to manage my SSH keys for Bitbucket. You get this option too in the blue button located here at the center of the bitbucket.org integration, but I'll just click it here. And we will automatically take you to the section where you would add the SSH key in bitbucket.org. So to do so, you would just click the Add Key option. I will label this uh, Get Kraken, paste my key information, and then I will add the key. So once that is done, the SSH key has been added to Bitbucket, and Get Kraken recognizes that it's connected and ready to go. So this is what allows me to push and pull to my repos, to clone repos. I now have the ability to perform all of these actions over SSH. Alternatively, if you don't wish or are unable to use SSH, you can use HTTPS instead, which you can set up simply by cloning a repo using the HTTPS clone URL. So before I exit and jump into the many examples I prepared for you in this video, I did want to touch on the integration for Bitbucket Server. So Bitbucket Server, again, the integration itself in terms of the features we provide are identical to the benefits from the bitbucket.org integration. However, the integration is a little different from a setup perspective. We use a personal access token to set up the integration within Gitkraken. And the way that works is that you first need to enter the host domain. So here's my example one, https colon slash slash bitbucket um, and these extra characters here. One note, um, if you do copy it directly from wherever you browse to access your Bitbucket server account, you may get something like slash dashboard. And then when you click to generate the bit the personal access token for Bitbucket server, you may then generate an error. So all you need to do is just make sure you take off any trailing slashes or any characters after the slash as well. You just want the host domain itself. With the correct URL, you can then generate a token on Bitbucket server, which will look something like this. So you'll be taken to a link where you have the ability to create the personal access token. So it's important to name the personal access token and make sure you provide it with admin permissions. Then once you generate and create the personal access token, you will then be able to copy it, paste it, and connect to Bitbucket server. And just like before, you will get another green button that allows you to generate the SSH key and copy it to your clipboard. And similarly, once this is done, you get a similar option to then manage the SSH keys directly within Bitbucket server. And the configuration is pretty similar to what you had before. You then have the option to add a key by clicking the Add Key option, paste in what you just copied from Git Kraken, add the key, and then you are done. So once you go back to Git Kraken, you'll see that you are connected and that you may use SSH to interact with that remote repository up on Bitbucket server. So again, the features are the features and benefits that you receive from both integrations are identical, but the setup is a little different. Bitbucket server uses a personal access token, while bitbucket.org makes an API call to bitbucket.org. Hopefully you found that pretty quick and easy to do. Now we can jump into some of the examples I prepared for this video today, which should outline the benefits of using the integration with Bitbucket. The first thing I want to show you is just what a repository looks like in Gitkraken when you open it for the first time. So this is a support.gitkraken.com repository. The way that I got to this repo as a new tab is by I opened this repo in Gitkraken since it was already cloned to my machine. So I'm going to close this tab and show you what I mean. So I close the tab. I'm going to click new tab. And this is where you would go use the open a repo option. Similarly, you can use this file icon in the upper left corner to get to the same location. So I'm going to click open. And here when I look at the open options, I can click on, I can browse through my file structure, my folder structure I mean, 
and then I can look for any repo that I wish to open that's already on my machine. So for example, I already have support.gitkraken.com available here. I can go ahead and open that up, and here it is, that repo that I showed you before. Similarly, if you wish to clone a repo that you already have up on Bitbucket, in this case, you can go to the clone option, and under bitbucket.org, you will then get a list of all the repos that are available under your account or under some of some collaborators you may be working with in your organization. So in my case, I'm going to clone this repo called episode four. Um, let me click it here, and it's ready to be cloned. So to show you what that looks like on Bitbucket, so I'm gonna to go to my bitbucket.org accounts. So here it is on bitbucket.org. I have this under my username, episode four. And let's take a look at the entire repos file structure here. So here are all the files that I have up on Bitbucket. It's a series of files based off of the, the script of Star Wars Episode Four. Hopefully you don't mind the fun example. So one of the first things I'm going to do here is that inside Bitbucket, I can see that the opening crawl dot, dot markdown file looks like this. So as you can see, it is the Star Wars script. But I believe it is missing a title that I wish to include underneath the main header. So what I'm going to do is I want to make that change using Git Kraken. So before I can make any changes to this repo, it's first important that I actually clone the repo. So I have bitbucket.org selected, episode 4 selected, I'm ready to clone the repository. Okay, I've successfully cloned the repo, I'm going to open it now. And here it is. So it's, it's just a handful of commits here. I'm sure you may have projects that have commit and tree structure that looks a lot more like the Git Kraken, support.gitkraken repo. But this will do perfect for the examples I have today. So what I want to do is I'm going to make a change directly to this existing branch. Here I have master. And if this is your first time looking at Git Kraken, let me do a quick tutorial on what you see. So here in the center is where we have the graph, which represents a history of your file, of all the changes that have been made to your repo. As you click on each commit, which is represented by each of these nodes, you will have access to the files that were modified, added, deleted, or renamed. So as I click through each of these, I can see which files were modified and or added. So depending on the color scheme, that's how you can tell what type of change you're looking at when you select that commit node. And then when you click on a given file, you will be presented with the diff. The diff will show you what was added or removed. And if a certain section had text added to it, it will try to highlight that for you as well. In this case, I'm looking at a diff where an entire section was added all at once. Over here on the left-hand side, we will show you your local branches, your list of remotes, pull request tags, and submodules. And over here on the right is where we have been reviewing the files that were modified for a given commit. If I ever wanted to view the entire file structure, all I have to do is check this box to view all files. And this is where I can browse through all the files that are in this re repo. In this case, it's only a handful of files, but if you had something that was a bit more robust, you'll probably see folders and folders within folders with files inside those folders. And if you needed to filter those things, it's pretty easy just to type in either the name of the file or the file type to locate the file you're looking for. And if that all and if all else fails, you can always click this option here to search through your commits. And you can also remove this option to gain access to more search criteria. This is what we call the fuzzy finder, which is also available using the keyboard shortcut command P. So here it is, or control if you're on Windows or Linux. And the way that I got to this keyboard shortcut list is just by clicking command slash. So that's how I got this full list. This is definitely worth looking through if you're someone who prefers to use keyboard shortcuts to quickly navigate through an application. Okay, so going back to my first example, I wish to make a change to this file that we were looking at previously. So that was the opening crawl dot, dot markdown file. I know that was quick, but that was a file I was editing. And what I wish to do is I'm going to click on this file. I've located it. And I'm actually going to make this change directly within Git Kraken. So one of the nice features of Git Kraken is that you do have a code editor built into it as well. So if you wanted to make a change without necessarily needing to open another program, 
you will either get an option to edit the file here in the upper left corner or you will be able to jump straight into editing a file which is the case right now so here I'm going to label this episode for a new hope there we go I'm gonna click command s to save so when I save that change a couple things happen and regardless of whether you save that change here in the file editor for Git Kraken, or if you open another tool like VS Code, for example, same you get the same result, which is what you're looking at right now. A whip node appears at the very top of the branch I currently have checked out. When I click on the whip node, I then, so if I were to click somewhere else and then click on it here, you will then get a list of all the files that were modified. So in this case, it's only one file, the opening underscore crawl dot markdown file. And here I see that a new line was added, which is shown in green. And I have an option to either stage this one line, stage the hunk, or stage the file. So this is where you get the, so this is a great way of demonstrating how any change that you make to your repo will be tracked by Gitkraken, and, and you may then choose to stage. Or if you have multiple changes already staged, you can choose to unstage some of those changes before you're ready to commit them. So in my case, this is the only change I wish to make, and I plan to commit this right away. So I'm going to stage this change, and I'm going to type new title for the script and commit my change. And quick, quick quality of life thing, this is uh, expandable should you wish to type more or get more real estate. And you can collapse these as well in case you want to only look at your commit message. Some quality of life features here. So I'm going to commit my change and the moment I do that I will see that the commit has been made using my profile icon and a couple other things have changed as well. So this master now appears in line with my new commit but I see another master in line with the previous commit. So this is the difference between my local and my remote repository up on GitHub. So this is another detour before I complete this example Let's dive into remotes real quick. A remote repository, which is often called a remote, is a Git repository that's hosted on the internet or some other network. And in our case, it's Bitbucket. Cloning a remote creates a local version of that repository on your machine, giving you a sandbox to experiment without affecting the original code base, like we did in our example. Cloning also establishes a connection between the local repository on your machine and the remote repository up on Bitbucket, allowing push and pull actions with the remote project. The power of Git is that multiple clones of a single remote can be created by other team members, enabling others to collaborate on the same project efficiently and with less risk to the original code. So before, back here in Git Kraken, when we created, when we performed a clone using Git Kraken, we established a connection between Git Kraken and the remote repository here on Bitbucket. That connection is telling us that master, our local master, is actually ahead of what master of where master is up on Bitbucket. So in order to get these up to speed, I need to perform a push. So once I perform a push, that change will then get added to Bitbucket. So now if I go back to Bitbucket and I do a quick page refresh. Let's take a look at this file. Here we go. So before there was no subtitle, it was just blank. Here, now that we've pushed the repo up to Bitbucket, I see that a new hope has been added. And when I go back and examine the branch structure here in Git Kraken, I now see that my local is now in line with my remote up on Bitbucket. So now I see that the change I made is now up on Bitbucket. All is good with the world. So next, what do you do if you see a change pushed to your remote that's not yet on your local? What are some options that you have? To simulate that, I'm going to open Bitbucket this time. And let's go back to the list of files in the repository. So we started with the opening crawl. Let's go to the other side. We're going to the final scene. And I want to edit this file directly in Bitbucket and commit the change here to simulate as though someone had made this change elsewhere, somewhere on the planet, somewhere in the universe, right? So the change that I will make here 
is there is a section where Princess Leia places a medallion around Chewbacca's life around Chewbacca's neck. So I'm going to change that to Chewbacca growls and R2 beeps with happiness. Simplify the scene a bit. So I'm going to create that commit. I won't check the option to create a pull request. There's no need to simulate this. I'm just using this for an example. And now when I go back to Git Kraken, I can perform a fetch and once I do that, my graph again changes. So here I see a commit made on my remote. So the final scene was edited. And when I click this commit node, let me uncheck the view all files option and click on the final scene.md. I see the change that I just made moments ago, where I removed those couple lines and added an extra word to Chewbacca growls and R2 beeps with happiness. How do I get this change onto my local version? That's where you would do a pool. You can always perform a fetch to first detect whether or not there are any pending changes on your remotes. In my case, I only have one remote. You may have a repo where you have numerous remotes here on the left-hand panel. So it's always a good idea to perform a fetch. You can even make that the default action by clicking the node for it. In my case, I'm going to leave it as pull fast forward if possible. And I'm going to perform a pull, which will then fast forward if it's possible. In this case, it is. So because I've performed that pull, now when I click on the final scene.markdown file and I edit this file, I now see that Chewbacca is only growling and that no metal is bestowed upon Chewbacca. If you were to perform the same exact action where you pull and then open the same file in VS Code or in Atom or whatever file editor you prefer, you'll see the same thing where your file will now update to the changes based off of what exists on Bitbucket. So hopefully that's a quick way of seeing how you can perform a pull or a push with your remote repositories thanks to that connection you have between the local and remote repository. So quick recap. Git Kraken makes it pretty easy to clone, fetch, or pull from your Bitbucket remote onto your local machine. And similarly, you can then make changes to your project locally on your machine and then push those changes up to Bitbucket so that other people can see it. And just like we showed, just like we went through together, if you do push a change up to Bitbucket and other team members who perhaps are also using Git Kraken perform a fetch, they will see that those changes are pending and they can just pull down to their fork or their clone of the repository. So the next scenario, what if you make a mistake? So one of the benefits of using Git Kraken is that you do have the ability to undo many of the actions that you perform locally. One of those actions could be a commit that you made locally. So let's make another change that represents a mistake and then undo that change. In this case, we're going to edit the garbage masher scene. And this time I will use the fuzzy finder command P and I will let's type the command open file and I know the name of my file is the garbage masher scene. So here it is. What I'm going to do is that there is a section here where suddenly there is a great explosion and the door of the control tower flies across the floor. The second sentence here is four armed stormtroopers enter and one bonks their head. So let's save that change. And just like before, when I go back to the graph, I see that there is now a work in progress, a whip that I can click. And let's expand that section a bit here. Here we go. And I'll pull this down. So here's a garbage master scene modified with that change I just made. And I'm going to go straight through and commit this change. So by the way, you can always unstage from here as well. Any staged file can be unstaged. You even have the option to unstage certain lines if you prefer to go that route. So let's call this just a mistake for the sake of this example. So I made the change and I now realize that that was not supposed to be in the script. Although if you do look in the movie, there is a stormtrooper on the far right who does bonk their head. In any case, I want to undo that change and Git Kraken makes it much easier to just click undo and then you return to where you were before, 
where you have a WIP node with all the files either staged or unstaged. So this is perfect, right? How would you undo a change using the command line? It's, it's probably a little bit more complicated and you may have to look up a few commands if you don't have them at the top of your mind. Here it's much easier, it's much more forgiving to work through commit or even undo commits or even undo merges as you go through and just do your day-to-day -day work within your project and within your Kraken. Okay, so to demonstrate the final example I have for you, I'm going to be doing a number of actions which include creating a branch. So branching is a common workflow practice that's implemented by many teams. There are numerous branching workflows out there that you can explore or you may already have one as part of your organization. Maybe you already have policies that you adhere to. So what I'm going to do to show off this example is I'll show off a few more features here. I'm going to click discard all changes to remove this mistake that I had made and I, this will allow me to reset the state of my repo back to where it was before I had made this change. So it's going to revert it back to this commit here, the final scene dot markdown file. Okay, so that's a quick way of clearing things out, especially if you didn't mean if you don't mean to keep those changes that you had in staging. So for the next example, I will create a branch and there's a couple of ways of creating a branch in GitKraken. You can always right click on any given commit to create a branch on any commit. And that's a great way of quote unquote time traveling. That's an easy way of, let me just do temp. You can create a branch anywhere and then check it out. So in my case, I'm going to create a branch off of master and I'm going to choose to create it off the most recent commit here. And let's call this director's cut. I'll do director cut. Let's do that. Okay, so in this director cut, I'm going to modify another scene in this repository. Again, I'm going to click Command-P. I'm going to open a file, and this file is the Cantina scene. So I'm, I click Cantina. It's the first result in the fuzzy finder. I hit Enter, and I'm taken to the screen that you see right now. And what I'm interested in doing in this scene is taking out this section right here. And let's take out this line here as well. So I'm going to click Command S to save. Again, you could perform the same exact operation in any text editor that you prefer. I just happen to be using Kraken since it's pretty convenient. So the change I made appears as in the whip node here at the top. I can click on the markdown file to view the change that was made. And in my case, I'm ready to go ahead and commit this and create a pull request so that other people can review and comment on it before I before it gets merged into the project. So Han shoots second. Let's stage the file and commit the change. So in order to create a pull request in Git Kraken, all you need to do is perform a drag and drop or you can click the plus icon. Now this is the last last quick uh, detour that I'll make for this video. A pull request, which is also known as a merge request, is an event where a contributor asks a repo maintainer to review code that they wish to merge into a project. While pull requests are not a core Git feature, they are a common collaboration feature of Git hosting services like Bitbucket. So in my case, I wish to create a pull request to merge director cut into master. So that right there was just a drag and drop. I took director cut and I dragged and dropped it onto master where I then have this option here at the very bottom to push the director cut and start a pull request to origin master. So what this means is right now this director cut branch does not exist on my Bitbucket remote. And one way I can fix that is I can either click that option to push and then start a pull request or I can just first perform first perform a push and I'm given the option of choosing which remote I can I wish to push this branch to and the reason I get this option is because here on the left hand side you may have a number of remotes that you've already added and you can push to those remotes as well if you have permission to do so in my case this is my this is this belongs to my account so it's pretty so I do have permission to push to that remote 
So once I push it, I will see that my icon appears collinear with the local icon. And now if I were to repeat that option of dragging and dropping onto master, it just says start a pull request. But either option, push and then start, or start right away, are valid options for starting a pull request. It just depends on what state your repo is in and what state your remote is in. So I'm gonna click the option to start a pull request. And this is one of the major benefits of using the Bitbucket integration within Git Kraken, is that you have the option to create the pull request right here in the application. Here we pre-fill, because I performed a drag and drop, we pre-fill the information for you. You're coming from this repo in this branch and you wish to go to this repo in this branch. And once I click create pull request, I then get the option to view the pull request up on Bitbucket. And you may notice here in the upper in the branch that the pull request icon now appears. Now, just because this toast message disappeared doesn't mean I can't access that pull request from Git Kraken. You can right click on any pull on any branch with the pull request icon and click to view the pull request as it exists on Bitbucket. So here's where you continue your workflow. You may already have practices where you go through and perform a code review. Maybe you have comments that are made. You go back and forth between the person who is making the pull request and the person who is reviewing it and perhaps eventually merges it in. In my case, let's say that this looks good to me and I'm ready to merge. I can just merge this. Me as a reviewer, I don't even have to be using Git Kraken. I can just click the option to merge. And then once that's complete, again, you can just go into Git Kraken, perform a fetch. It will auto fetch automatically if you give it a few extra seconds. I'm going to, here it is. The pull request is done. So director cut branch was merged into master. And now I can perform a double click on master. And when I do that in Git Kraken, I'm given an option to reset my local to here. And that's actually the option that I want. So before I do that, let me show you what I mean. So because the reviewer did the review and they merged the pull request in, the remote went ahead of where my local was. So that's why you see my icon here ahead of the local machine. So I have a couple options. You know, I can double click on master and then perform a pull. Or you can do what I did earlier and you can right click to reset a master to this commit. So one last thing, if you are using the Bitbucket integration, don't forget that you can add remotes pretty easily just by clicking the plus icon here on the left, clicking bitbucket.org or Bitbucket server if that's what you're using, and you will get a list of all the other collaborators on this repository. I happen to be the only contributor, but I just want to say that that is a pretty handy feature of the integration. And even if you aren't using the integration, you do have the option to enter the SSH or HTTPS URL of the repo to add it as a remote. So that's always an option that's available to you. All right, that about covers it. So that's how you can get started using the Bitbucket integration with Git Kraken. It gives you easy access to your remotes and it makes it easier to create a pull request inside of Git Kraken and then manage it from within Bitbucket. And of course, we also make it pretty easy to either use HTTPS or SSH as your authentication method. I hope you found this helpful and feel free to watch other videos in this series. We also have other videos about Git concepts should you wish to review those too.